I abhor math. In the dictionary, the word abhor is to regard with loathing or horror, to detest. In other words, a very strong word for hate. Some people don't like math. They don't like it for reasons as varied as the kaleidoscope that spans the huge spectrum of human personality. But if I had to sum up the major reasons for people disliking math, I could distill them into a short list. The first item I'll mention is perceived lack of relevance. People don't recognize that they use math and even algebra as they live their lives from day to day. I say perceived because even in doing something as commonly done as crossing a street, a person uses algebra to determine when it is safe to do so. Also, it's very relevant in managing money, a key skill for survival in the modern world. A second reason is that there are so many things that are more interesting than math. And this second point, I think, is not worth contesting. Look at the numbers of views garnered by any of my math videos, or any math videos, for instance, when compared with the number of views in the millions of videos by Shane Dawson or any other of those that appeal to pop culture. These math videos, including mine, some of which are pretty popular for math videos, have nowhere near the same popular appeal. One of the best explanations of this I have seen is stated by the character played by the actor Robin Williams in the movie Dead Poets Society when he said that medicine, law, business, and engineering help us to live, but are not what we live for. Okay, so he didn't say the word math, but he meant it as part of his statement. I have a niece who is 17, Jordan, pictured here. She's a smart girl and a good student, but math isn't really her thing. She's more of an artist. She's very good at visual arts and is a dancer. Jordan is one of my friends on Facebook, and a little over a month ago, she made a three-word posting to her friends. I abhor math. Note the capitalization of abhor. Note that two people liked this. I love my niece, and since I am one of her friends on Facebook, as I read her message, I didn't think it the most healthy thing for her to be thinking, and as a concerned uncle, I responded, hoping that I would be able to give a strong message, but was concerned that too strong a message or tone might alienate her, and here is my message. To summarize, I told her that thinking that way was harmful, pointed out how math does wonderful things in her life now, and offered a suggestion on how she could foster a more productive attitude about math. After my response, she received another response from one of her teachers, her dance teacher, Mrs. Moore, supporting my message to my niece Jordan. And finally, Jordan responded positively to me and to Mrs. Moore, telling both of us that she agreed with us and that we were absolutely right. I bring this up not to be tough on Jordan, but because her feelings are so honest and closely mirror sentiments of my students who come into my classes year after year. Like my niece, I want all my students to be happy and successful, and so I try to give the best advice, counsel, and instruction I can to help them to be more successful and happy in life. I have a student from last year, Shatira, pictured here, who was a good student for me, but in a candid moment told me that she wished that her math education could have stopped after learning to add and subtract in the third grade. My reply to her was that there are places in the world today, like here in remote places in the Amazon River Basin, where there is very little math education. But in these societies, there are not 21st century amenities such as plumbing, air conditioning, cell phones, cars, and computers. Also, their life expectancies are less than half of what ours are. Several years ago, while waiting in line to get a title change for my car, I struck up a conversation with a nice lady. She was probably about 55 years old and was working for a truck leasing company. She was kind of an executive secretary and was in line taking care of her company's car title business that day. When I told her that I was a math teacher, she expressed regret at not having learned math and algebra better when she was in high school. When I asked her why, she told me that she didn't have the math skills to qualify for better job opportunities in life. This lady has really had a pretty good life. But not knowing math and algebra better made life tougher for her. Maybe she wasn't able to live in as good a neighborhood as she would have liked. She didn't have some of the advantages that having a better math education could have provided for her. I know another lady, I'll call her Cynthia, who wanted to upgrade her employment by getting into the nursing profession but couldn't make it because her math skills were so low that she couldn't handle the junior college math requirements. She did not have the skills to understand percentages, proportions, or even scientific notation, all things necessary as building blocks for being able to do the job of nursing. All colleges, universities, and most jobs require math testing to qualify. Why do they do it? They want to have smart people in their schools and in their companies, the best qualified they can find. And math ability is easy to test. 
And since businesses involve decisions using money, and money and math go hand in hand, these companies want to have employees skilled enough in math to make decisions that will help the business instead of hurt the business. Around 1650, the great French philosopher and mathematician René Descartes was able to get a job, probably the best job of his life, as a tutor to a Swedish queen. But in today's world, those with skills in math and algebra have far greater opportunities than those of Monsieur Descartes and the brilliant mathematicians of his day even dreamed of having. If you don't like math, I suggest that you try to see it differently. Instead of seeing it as something there to make your life difficult, try to see it as your friend, something that does a lot to make your life better. Try to see the beauty of the symmetry and order. Consider the words of Galileo. The book of nature cannot be understood unless one first learns to comprehend the language and read the characters in which it is written. It is written in the language of mathematics. And its characters are triangles, circles, and other geometric figures without which it is not humanly possible to understand a single word of it. We live in an age of communication. It keeps on getting easier to communicate and cheaper. The displays we see to communicate are defined as colors digitally, mathematically defined, on a Cartesian coordinate plane also digitally and mathematically defined. If you truly abhor math, not I nor anyone can make you change your mind, but your life can be better if you do change your attitude. You alone have agency. True change needs to come from within. This has been I Abhor Math. Thanks for viewing.